Please rise. Behold, I bring you good news of great joy which shall be to all the people. For to you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. In his name, together with the Father and the Holy Spirit, we come together to worship and adore him. Amen. We join in the hymn. remembrance of your baptism, you are invited to make the sign of the cross. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Those who dwelt in the land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. We have beheld Christ's glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all people. In the still of the night, when all was dark and silent, the light of the world was born in Bethlehem. To us a child is born, to us a son is given. The government will rest on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given. In him was life, and the life was the light of all. Please be seated.
the light revealed from Isaiah chapter 7. Again, the Lord spoke to Ahaz, Ask a sign of the Lord your God. Let it be deep as Sheol, or high as heaven. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, and I will not put the Lord to the test. And he said, Hear then, O house of David, is it too little for you to weary men, that you weary my God also? Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. And also from Isaiah chapter 9. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in the land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as they are glad when they divide the spoil. For the yoke of his burden, and the staff for his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For every boot of the tramping warrior in battle tumult, and every garment rolled in blood, will be burned as fire, fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace there will be no end. On the throne of David and over his kingdom, to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. And from Micah chapter 5. But you, O Bethlehem Ephrathah, who are too little to be among the clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to be ruler in Israel, whose coming forth is from of old, from ancient days. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We continue with the hymn.
the light received from Luke chapter 2. In those days a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria, and all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling cloths, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. And in the same region there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of a great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God, for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. We join in the hymn. The light made known from Matthew chapter 1. Now the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. 
When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. And her husband Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. But as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took his wife, but knew her not, until she had given birth to a son, and he called his name Jesus. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. We join in the hymn. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. It's a joy to see all of you here this evening. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Christmas is that day that the Son of God was born and it connects us to the days of Good Friday and Easter. Yes, you cannot separate Christmas from Good Friday and Easter and all three days have this message behind it. God loves you. In fact, everything that he has done for you, ever since the time of creation, in fact, for all of humanity, has been because God loves you. Think about it. He created you. He created faith in you by your baptism. And with the gifts of his word and his sacrament, he sustains you to life everlasting. It is true that God loves you. You. Every Christmas Eve, we gather to hear this wonderful story that we have heard, the timeless story of the birth of the Christ child, with the very fact that God has done all of this 
for you. And nowhere else can you receive exactly what you receive here tonight. For this is the place where in a world where you definitely crave, constantly crave a love without conditions, it is here that you are given just that. That love is here for you because God Himself, in His Son, locates Himself here for you. He locates Himself in humble and yet profound means in His Word and under bread and wine, and it's all for you. Now, how do you know that a gift is for you? Now, if you're like me, uh, you go and you check out all the gifts under the tree. And then, of course, you size them all up. You look at what? the tag. And there on the tag is what? Your name is on it. That's how you know that that gift is for you. So I'd like to ask, as you think through the years and all the gifts that you have received, I want you to think about what was the greatest gift that you ever received? Was it big or was it small? Was it expensive or was it homemade? And who gave it to you? Now, likely when we think back on that gift, the reality is, is it's probably someone who loved and cared about us that gave us that gift. Most of the time, it's not a stranger that hands you a gift, and it's certainly not an enemy that hands you a gift. But you see, that's not the case here on Christmas. You see, here on Christmas, we have to come to face to face with the fact that we are all enemies of God in our sin. And so God, in love for us, does the unthinkable. He gives us the gift of His Son. Remember, His love is unlike anything that we have ever experienced in this life. And most of us would likely contend that in our earthly relationships, well, they do have their limitations. Now, though we might claim that someone loves us unconditionally, truth be told, that's actually impossible for us as humans because our love as humans has limits. God, on the other hand, well, His love has no limits. God's love isn't dependent upon your performance. He's not looking for you to somehow meet a mark on the scale there in order to be able to earn His favor, to stay in His good graces. As we heard in our sermon a couple weeks ago, in the midweek Advent sermon, God is all about grace upon grace. By His very nature, by His very character, He can't help but just keep giving and giving and loving and loving because, well, that's what He is. That's what He does. That's who He is. And as today wraps up the Advent season, here as we celebrate Christ's birth tomorrow on Christmas Day, I'd like to ask you, where are you at in your life of faith right now? Where is Jesus at in your life here on December 24th? Is He far off in the distance because, well, you have wandered from Him? After all, God doesn't move. Or is He near because you have made Him a part of every single day of your life? Or is Jesus just a part of your life on Christmas and Easter? Or is He daily a part of your life? Tough questions to consider. But tough love and true love warrants tough questions. For when we come to worship and we hear the familiar story of the Savior's birth, we cannot separate why He came. Oh yes, I know, tonight. Tonight we get to do what the shepherds do and we get to look into the manger all again. But let's not forget, ten tiny little fingers and ten tiny little toes eventually become that which belongs to a man with hands and feet that have nails driven through them as he bleeds and dies for all humanity. You see, you've got to see that cross before you here tonight. It's meant to make you uncomfortable. And it's meant to comfort you. Don't ever forget that as you look at that cross, that it was once covered in blood, but it is blood that was actually supposed to be yours and mine. It was supposed to be yours and mine because of what we did, because of the sins that we committed. And it's also meant to comfort you. As you look at that cross, you see that it is empty, and we are reminded of the fact that, yes, 
The tomb is also empty. And we have a future to look forward to in heaven. And as you look at that cross, you can also see God loves you. God loves you so much that He sent you His Son. Would any of us ever think of sharing our child with someone else? With enemies like us? There was once a woman who shared what happened one Christmas as she and her family were traveling and they stopped at a restaurant several miles from home. She wrote, I sat Eric in a high chair and suddenly Eric squealed with glee and said, Hi there! And he pounded his hands on the high chair tray, his eyes wide with excitement. I looked around and saw the source of his merriment. It was a man with a tattered rag of a coat, dirty, greasy, and worn. His pants were baggy and his toes poked out of his would-be shoes. His shirt was dirty and his hair uncombed and unwashed. His whiskers were too short to be called a beard and his nose was so varicose it looked like a road map. We were too far from him to smell him, but I was sure that he smelled. His hands waved and he said, Hi there, baby. Hi there, big boy. Hey, see you there, buster. My husband and I exchanged looks. What do we do? Eric continued to laugh and answered, Hi there! Everyone in the restaurant noticed and looked at us and then at the man. The old geezer was creating a nuisance with my beautiful baby. Our meal came and the man began shouting from across the room, Do you know Patty Cake? Do you know Peekaboo? Hey, look, he knows Peekaboo! Nobody thought the old man was cute. He was obviously drunk. My husband and I were embarrassed. We sat in silence, all except Eric, who just continued running through his entire repertoire with this skid row bum. We finally got through the meal and headed for the door. My husband went to pay the check and told me to meet him in the parking lot. The old man sat poised between me and the door. Lord, just let me get out of here before he speaks to me and Eric, I prayed. As I drew closer to the man, I turned my back, trying to sidestep him. And as I did, Eric leaned over my arm, reaching with both arms in a baby's pick-me-up position. And before I could stop him, Eric propelled himself from my arms into the man's. Eric, in an act of total trust, love, and submission, laid his tiny head on the man's ragged shoulder. The man's eyes closed, and I saw tears beneath the lashes. His aged hands, full of grime, pain, and hard labor, gently so gently cradled my baby's bottom and stroked his back. I stood awestruck. The old man rocked and cradled Eric in his arms for a moment, and then his eyes opened and set squarely on mine, and he said in a firm, commanding voice, You take care of this baby. Somehow I manage an I will from a throat that contained a stone. He pried Eric from his chest unwillingly, lovingly, as though he were in pain. I received my baby back, and the man said, God bless you, ma'am. You've given me my Christmas gift. I said nothing more than a muttered thanks. With Eric in my arms, I ran for the car. My husband wondering why I was crying and holding Eric so tightly, and why I was saying, my God, my God, forgive me. I felt it was God asking, are you willing to share your son for a moment? when God shared his son with us for all eternity. In love, God shared his son to the point of death for you. God loves you. God loves you. God loves you. He loves you even when you wander away from Him and you fail to come into His house. In fact, that's why He's called you back here tonight. You see, He's the Good Shepherd. And like a Good Shepherd, He leaves the 99 in search of you. And by the power of the Spirit, that's what He's done here tonight. He's called you here. By the power of the Gospel, the good news of Jesus, He's called you here to spend time with Him. You see, we're told that when the shepherds were left by those angels, they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. 
And so it is to be with us. In haste, come here. Not just tonight, but week after week. Come here to behold your Savior, to repent and be forgiven. I mean, just think of what it must have been like for those shepherds to have seen Him for the first time. I mean, just think about the awe and the wonder that must have come upon them as they actually got to see the flesh of the Son of God with their very own eyes. I mean, just think of how humbled and honored they must have been that God could have chosen anybody else, but He chose them. God chose them. And just think, God chose you. In your baptism, that's what God did. He chose you. And like a gift that's under the tree, when you look at it and you see your name on it, that's what God has done with you. He has placed His name upon you. He has marked you as redeemed by Christ the crucified. He has chosen you with His holy and precious blood of the Son of God. And here on Christmas Eve, we are brought once again to this overwhelming reality that God loves you. He loves you dearly. And it's a love that's like a cup that just runneth over. I mean, it's not meant to be contained. We're told once the shepherds saw the baby Jesus, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. It is just as the angels told them. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And now it's our turn. It's our turn to tell our family members and our friends and, and even those enemies. Because everyone needs to hear what we have heard. Everyone needs to hear this good news of great joy. All need to know that in a world that is filled with a love of conditions, that they, just like us, have a God who loves them without conditions. God loves them dearly. And He loves you too. He loves them and us so much that He did the unthinkable. Yes, today God calls you to do the same as did those shepherds long ago. Take a look into the manger once again. See the baby Jesus. Behold Him anew. And ponder again what the Almighty God did do. He died for you. He died for you because He loves you. And you can't separate the two. You see, you can't separate God from you. Because everything He did was all for you. God loves you. He loves you dearly. In Jesus' name, Amen. And the peace of God which surpasses all human understanding guard and keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We join in singing the hymn of response.
Please be seated as we go before our Lord with our offerings and tithes. I'll invite you to fill out that fellowship pad on the inside portion of the pew. We receive our gifts. Let us pray. Almighty God, you made this holy night shine with the brightness of the true light. You have filled us with the light of the world who became human and lived among us. Let the light of our faith in the Christ child shine in all we do and say. In his name we pray, live, and reflect his light. Amen. The Light Reflected when the Christ child was born in Bethlehem, the world was in darkness. Christ is the light of the world. He brought light where there was only darkness. We, as his children, who celebrate our Savior's birth, are to be lights to the world. We share with one another the joy of Christmas. As the light of these candles illumines our faces, it reminds us of Christ, our light, the child in the manger at Bethlehem, the Savior suffering our death on the cross, and soon to come from his throne on high as the judge of all. He is our light here on earth, and the eternal light enlightens heaven, where there is no need of candle or sun. 
Rejoice, the light of the world has come. That light transforms us with the brightness of His glory.
You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and then cover its light. Instead, they set the lamp on its stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before men, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Come, Lord Jesus, illumine our hearts, that we may carry your light to a fallen world. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace.